Please be seated. अच्छा अच्छा ते ते समझ तुझे पूछ नहीं तुझे पूछ
<coughs> I bow to all the seekers of truth. <coughs> As I told you yesterday that truth is what it is. <coughs> we cannot understand it. You have to feel it. We cannot conceptualize it. And you cannot feel it also at this human awareness. We have to become a subtler being, as described in all the scriptures, that you are to be born again and that you have to become the spirit to feel the existence of truth. <coughs> First thing we have to understand that all this is a process of a living energy. Divine is a living energy and divinity within you also is a living energy. <coughs> we do not understand sometimes what is a living energy. When we sow a seed in the grounds, they sprout by themselves. When a mother conceives a child <coughs> according to the normal nature of human beings, their body has to expel everything that is foreign. But when the child is conceived, it is not only kept in the body, but is nourished, looked after, developed, and at the right time it is expelled. There are so many other things which cannot be explained through medical science. But one must know that to understand what I am saying, you must have an open mind like a scientist has. And if you find what I'm saying, which is like a hypothesis, <coughs> is true and gives you the experience of the truth, then as honest people you must accept it. Because it is for your emancipation and for the emancipation of the whole world. In our evolutionary process, now we have become human beings. But as you know, we have not achieved the absoluteness. For that, something has to happen within us. Last breakthrough has to take place. And that is what we are talking about here. You have been already told about the mechanism that is here. <coughs> And this mechanism exists within you. These two lines that you see left and right are nourishing our left and right sympathetic nervous system. And the central one that you see here is nourishing our parasympathetic nervous system. Now these centers are created by these two sides, left and right, like this in the center. And these centers are all the time exhausted by us whenever we try to use energy. For example, if you are running fast, you can increase the heart rate. But it comes to its normal self through the parasympathetic nervous system, while in emergency you use your sympathetic nervous system. <clears throat> Thus, we start exhausting the energy of these centers. And that's how we get into problems of our physical, mental, and emotional being. 
Supposing we are exhausting the energy on the right hand side, means we are very futuristic, we are planning all the time, thinking of the future, then what happens? The right side starts moving like this. And something happens on the left side, a shock, then it breaks. When it breaks, then we lose our connection with the central nervous system. That means we lose our connection with our brain that controls it and we become on our own. And that's how psychosomatic trouble start, especially cancer, and the malignancy sets in. When the Kundalini rises from there, she goes through this center as well as this center, pushes them together and nourishes them. Now let us see what is the quality of all these centers within us. This is all within us and we have to see that how we exist with the energy of the center. The first center that you see is down below. <coughs> this center which is down below is below the Kundalini. And so we have to understand that this center supports the rising of the Kundalini but is not pierced through by the Kundalini. This center is for all our excretion, even sex. So those people who say that through sex you can raise your Kundalini, they are absolutely wrong and are misleading you. Because you can see here clearly it is below that. This is the center of innocence. It's the center where we say that the deity of innocence is sitting who incarnated later on as Christ, on the higher center there, between where you see this la my red spot, is one of the windows. It is on the optic chiasma. <coughs> and that's how we say that Christ was the incarnation of innocence. Because he is sitting on the optic chiasma, he said that, Thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. This is the sentence he has used. To such a subtle way he has suggested that you will not have adulterous eyes, meaning you will have very pure eyes, innocent eyes. Why did he talk of the eyes? Because he's sitting on the optic chasm. It's a very constricted center and he was to be resurrected to show that you can also pass through that center very easily. So his, his message is not his crucifixion, but his resurrection. And that is how we are all going to resurrect it, not after death, but right now. We should not postpone our resurrection anymore. <coughs> then the second center that we have is very important which is called as the Swadhisthana. This center looks after physical and our mental activities. Perhaps the doctors don't know that it has a very important work to do is that it has to nourish the brain with new cells because all the time the brain is using these cells for its activity. So the energy has to go from this center up there, you can see, and then it nourishes the center, it uh, nourishes the brain through its activity. Now when we are very futuristic or we are using too much of a brain, I should say, too much of a brain activity we have. We are futuristic, we are planning too much, thinking too much, all the time, thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. That time we are using the energy of this center. <coughs> but this center has another very important thing to be done, that it goes round as you see, it moves all round here. It's shown here directly but it's connected to the center. And it moves round and round and round and gives energy to this area where we have our liver, our pancreas, our spleen, kidney 
and parts of intestines. Now, if we start exhausting ourselves with too much thinking, then the main work of the center suffers, and that's how we develop all these diseases of all these organs. Like, for example, with liver, you develop a liver problem. Liver problem means that liver has a function to <coughs> emit heat from your body, which is poison, into the bloodstream. But when liver gets upset, we should say, the heat re is retained in the liver. <coughs> it passes upward and downward. When it passes upward, it affects a center there, as you can see, what we call as the right heart, and people develop what we call the disease as asthma. And when it passes downwards, it reaches the kidneys and coagulates, and you get kidney troubles, for which we have to go on dialysis and ultimately to die. So this heat is created because our liver is out of care. At the same time, this heat can also pass if a person, say, at a very young age drinks and puts in too much of physical efforts and is all the time busy thinking, thinking, he might get a very fatal heart attack because this heat can go towards his heart and just collapse it. Also, those people work very hard like that, can get a very massive heart attack. But the people <coughs> who have other problems on the left-hand side are different. They are the people who have lethargic organs. These organs do not work. And when they do not work, then they have all the other problems of the left side, as we call it. And this also causes another serious problem of psychosomatic troubles. Now, the essence of this center is that it is creativity. When the Kundalini nourishes the center, people become extremely creative. Now you have seen these artists who are playing here. They were very simple, ordinary artists, but after coming to Sahaja Yoga, suddenly they have bloomed so much. The most surprising thing is that people, say even from Switzerland, who do not know a word of Sanskrit, who do not know a word of Hindi language, have composed poems, they have put them to tunes, and they sing as good as these people can sing. It's impossible to believe that even the English, who are so difficult to even pronounce a one, a sentence in Hindi language, are now fluently speaking Sanskrit and talking all these things. Because of this creativity improves you. We have so many artists in India who came to Sahaja Yoga, I don't know if you know their names or not, like Amjad Ali, Jalota, so many of them. They got their realization, and after that, now today, they are very well-known artists. <coughs> also, the paintings. We have some Australian people who became quite good artists after coming to Sahaja So it gives you a sense of aesthetics, and also it gives you the energy to express yourself. Now, if you have the technique of how to create anything, say you want to make a house, or you want to paint, or if you want to do something, moldings, or anything that you want to do, if you have the technique, the creativity, the power of creativity starts pouring in you, and you start producing things on which you cannot even have thought of, and these things happen to a person. So a person can become extremely dynamic with this. But <clears throat> if with that you do not keep your Sahaja Yoga practice, means if you do not keep your connection with the Divine, then the energy gets exhausted. That's why Self-realization is very important for every artist, that he should get his connection with this all-pervading power, which is the combination of all the powers, so that he doesn't feel exhausted with it. Not only that, but all the time, the source is flowing into him. Constantly it has to flow, and that's why you have to do little practice of Sahaja Yoga after getting your realization, as I told you yesterday, that now you don't stop at this point. You have to make the connection perfect. Without the connection, it may be that you may go down. So it's best is to keep your connection on and work it out to give full respect to yourself. 
to your being. You are not an ordinary thing. You are not a chicken or something like that. You are a human being. And the beauty that is within you is to be discovered, is to be nourished and to be proud of. It is such a great thing you have within yourself, the powers, which I'll tell you one by one. <coughs> now above that is the, you see, the third center, which is called as Nabi, means the navel. This is the center of uh, the way we absorb the virtues, or the virtues are enlightened. When the center is enlightened, we really become righteous. You don't have to tell, now you don't do this and don't do that, you just become like a saint, a real saint, will not do wrong things. In the same way, when a person gets his realization, by the virtue of this center, he becomes absolutely balanced balanced with his family life, with his wife, with his children, balanced with the politics, economics, balanced with the society, balanced with all the people he, whom he knows, in a very balancing way he starts behaving. There's not one-sided activity. For example, somebody may be very much attached to the wife and may try to harm others. Somebody who is very much attached to others may harm his wife. So a kind of a balance is established by this. And a person who gets this develops a personality which we call as regal. The sense of dignity comes into such a person. Now you see our children <coughs> have lost the virtues. Our children don't have that regality. They have become very cheapish also and they run after materialism and things like that. They fight for small, small things. It's not only children, even the grown-ups are like that and they try to waste their energy fighting for something that is so useless. So by enlightenment of this center, you understand the value of matter. And the value of matter is this, that it has aesthetics, first of all, and secondly, you can express your love only through matter. If you love somebody, you'll give them something, a little flower also can express your love. Anything can express your love through matter. And then you become a very generous and very enjoyable person. Some people fe feel that if you become generous, you'll be bankrupt. It's not so. On the contrary. If you open one door, no air will come in. But if you open the other door, all the air will start circulating in the same way. When a person is generous, <coughs> he starts getting so many blessings because he is also connected with the Divine, that he is amazed, he doesn't know what to do with the things that he has got, and then he starts pouring it to others. There are so many things people are telling me about miracles and miracles of even material things in their jobs, in their purchasing, in their shopping, the way they have seen miracles happening, that it is nothing but just that this center is enlightened. And with this center, within you a righteousness comes in. And this righteousness doesn't force anybody else, it's just righteousness itself, which doesn't command anything uh, or demand anything, but it becomes a respectable personality. And you just start really understanding that, look at this man. Somebody was telling me today that in the office people asked, how are you so dignified? He said, I didn't know I was so dignified. No, you don't do anything indignified and you do everything just like a child also. So it's a childlike dignity you develop and it's a beautiful thing to happen, really it's angelic. Now then the, we have another center on top which we call as the heart center. It is in the center. <coughs> now in the sternum bone, behind the sternum bone, this center is there and thymus produces the antibodies in your sternum bone. These antibodies later on fight your diseases. When you are about 12 years of age, they, they go into the whole body and waiting there for a signal from your uh, sternum bone. That means, supposing you see something, you get frightened, this bone starts pulsating. When it pulsates, the antibodies know there's some emergency and they get prepared for it. Now this 
is such a normal thing to happen to people. But the insecurities can be of the worst type. And when these insecurities develop, develop, people can develop all kinds of diseases of the lungs, especially the women develop what you call as the breast cancer. Mostly these women are insecure. Maybe their husbands are not good or they feel that the husband may leave them alone or something like that. There are certain insecurities that are built in. They might be quite frightened personalities. I've seen most of the air hostesses have this center heart catching because they're afraid they may miss the plane or, I don't know, they have to be on the job and run and do... Most, mostly these time-bound jobs cause you the trouble here of the center heart. And this center heart is very important because for women especially, they have to be secured. If their motherhood is challenged, then they are even worse. And this is how one has to understand a woman should be very much respected if she is your wife, she is your child or anything. She has to be respected and given all the security. It's the woman who makes the society, it's the woman who creates the children, it's the woman who looks after the children. So the men have to give all the security and the protection to the womenhood and understand that it's a very important factor which if we neglect, we can have lots of problems with our society and the women will start competing with men and then the society will be all dislocated. So the <coughs> center on the left side and the right side are the centers of your father, of your mother and your father. If there's any problem with your father, then the right side catches and it gives you asthma. First of all, you are, we can say, vulnerable to asthma due to bad liver. Plus, if you have problems with your father or eat with your father. Supposing you are an unhappy father or maybe that you are not looking after your children, then you get this center caught up very badly. Then on the left side is the mothers. And the mother sees that when some mothers are not good mothers, also children can get this. Or when uh, the children are not nice to the mother, they also get it. So mother and father are very important factors in Sahaja Yoga and you have to understand that if your parents have been unkind to you, you must forgive them. Just forget about them because they have given you birth, you should be thankful. And just forget about them. That's the best way to get over the problem of left and right heart. Then we have on top, if you see, is this chakra which we call as the Vishuddhi chakra. This Vishuddhi chakra is, has got 16 petals and looks after our ear, nose, eyes, throat, everything our face, everything is looked after by this center. Now this center also has left and right, all centers have left and right, and when you feel guilty, the left center catches, which is a very dangerous thing because this gives you diseases like angina or maybe diseases like spondylitis and lethargic organs. Right when a person is very aggressive, talks very aggressively and uh, tries to dominate others and use his uh, power of speech uh, to show off the right side catches. The, the reactions of this can be many that the hand gets frozen and uh, they also get the cancer of the throat. All kinds of things can happen with this uh, chakra being in trouble. Now then we go to the chakra here in between the optic chasma. It is placed like this and it's absolutely closed. It is when you forgive, Christ has said that you have to forgive. When you forgive everyone and also when uh, you ask for forgiveness, this chakra opens like this. Otherwise it cannot open. We saw yesterday that some people, at least there were 10, 15 people who never got their realization because they had not forgiven. Then I put my hand, worked on them and it worked. But it's very simple to forgive because whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything, it's a myth. It's absolutely a myth that you don't forgive. But for that myth, you suffer so much. So you have to forgive to open the center of Agya. It's very important and is the deity on that is Jesus Christ. Then you enter into the area called Limbic area which is on top, which is called as Sahasrara in Sanskrit, means there are 1,000 petals. These look like uh, 
tongues of flames as described in the Bible. All of them look like tongues of flames, but in the brain they are of seven colors. Beautifully, very silently, peacefully, uh, opening, closing, opening, closing. So when the Kundalini goes into the limbic area, it enlightens your brain, it enlightens. And as I told you yesterday, there are many children who have had dullards, have now records in their examination. They have put so much of uh, new dimension to their understanding that their teachers, their professors are surprised. This is what happens when the brain, which is used very little, starts getting enlightened. Automatically you start using it. Then it pierces through the fontanel bone area, which is a very soft bone, through which this Kundalini comes out. I told you yesterday that Kundalini is your mother, individual mother, and she is the power of pure desire. All other desires that we have are impure. Today we want to have, say, uh, a chair, then we want to have a table, then we want to have a house. Then we are never satisfied. We go from one to another. And it is a principle of economics that wants are not satiable in general. So what is that want which is satiable? Is this want, this pure desire, and what is the pure desire is to be one with this divine power. Whether you know it or not, whether you are aware it or not, it exists in all the human beings. And the only thing that has to be done is it is to be awakened and to be connected to this all-pervading power. So the truth is that you are not this body, not this mind, uh, not these conditionings or ego, but you are the pure spirit and the second one is that we, this all-pervading power, which is a wonderful thing, it's impossible to describe it in this short lecture of mine, but it's the one which organizes, which does all the living work, to the minutest things it organizes. So complicated everything is, but it manages all that, not only, but above all, it forgives and it loves. So such a beautiful power is all around us, so why should we have any worry? And now we have to know that yesterday we had lots of questions and nice questions are there. Today also I would like you to ask me questions. But in asking questions, please remember not to ask what is your opinion about this person or that person. Of course now you must have known that I condemn all the people who take money in the name of God, absolutely openly. So please don't ask me questions about such people. Moreover, you ask questions which are related to our subject because I have come here not to get anything out of you but to give you what is your own, your beauty, your divinity, your glory. And then you will be surprised that the first thing that happens to you is a new awareness, a new dimension in your awareness, your, your awareness comes in and this awareness is called as collective consciousness by which you feel others on your fingertips. Who is the other then? Also, within yourself you can feel what's wrong with you. Only thing you have to be decoding these signals and you should know how to correct it. This is what has to happen, which is very simple. Within a month's time you can become your own masters and you know how to treat yourself and how to look after yourself. I'm sorry I am here in only for today, Tomorrow I have to go to Canberra and in this lecture, whatever is possible, in short, I've tried to tell you about this great mechanism that is within us. But by this you achieve so many beautiful things, as I told you yesterday, that you achieve the peace, you achieve the witness state, you achieve the collective consciousness, you achieve the light in your attention which acts. You pay attention to something, it acts, it works. Then you get the power that you can raise the Kundalini of others, like one light enlightened can enlighten another light. Then it gives you a complete idea about yourself and about others. Above all, you get an absolute knowledge 
about everything. When you have the absolute knowledge, there's no quarrel, no war, because everybody knows it on their fingertips. To know on your central nervous system is the real Bodha, from where the word Buddha has come, is the Veda, from where the word Vedas have come. Gnostics, Gna, Gna means Jnana, Jnana means the knowledge, and the knowledge is not mental knowledge, but the knowledge on your central nervous system. Whatever we have achieved in our ascent as human beings, we have got all this on our central nervous system. For example, you take a dog or a horse through a uh, dirty place, he can pass through easily, but a human being cannot pass because he has developed a new awareness about it. He knows what his beauty is, he knows what virtues are, he knows what his sin is. For an animal there is no sin, he'll do whatever he likes because he's completely under the control of the Divine. But for human beings there's freedom and he has to judge it with trial and error and reach a point to understand that he has to get to a higher awareness. May God bless you all. You have to ask the questions, I think <laughs> you are all forgotten. our diseases are because of the blockage in the chakras, no doubt. But see now, if you have to treat a tree and you start putting the medicine on the leaves, it will never be cured, you have to go to the roots. And because it is at the roots, it's so simple, only there are seven chakras and three nadis, means about twenty-one permutations and combinations you have to work out, that's all. You don't have to do anything, you just get into it. When the Kundalini crosses over the center, immediately you become thoughtlessly aware. That's a state when you are in the present, neither in the future, not in the past. And then the growth, spiritual, spiritual growth starts working it out. And suddenly you will find one day that you have touched that depth of your divinity. You don't have to direct yourself at all, the Kundalini itself directs. Yeah. What is the spirit, spiritual significance of what we are doing to our world in the sense of pollution? Yeah, spiritual aspect is that we do not have a balance. Now, once we start a machine, the machine has to produce, go on producing like mad. It produces more and more. Then the accent is on money, not on spirit. So what happens? that they produce more and more things and they create an atmosphere through advertisement, this, that, and everybody starts running for it. 
then you have accumulation of so much of uh, rubbish and what you have done is that you have exhausted the Mother Earth. But when you get your realization and when you are spiritual, then what happens, you buy very few things but very good things. You don't run after the fashions or anything, but you make a dress uh, which is good for you, which is decent for you and may not be one hundred dresses, maybe five or six, but very beautiful, dignified, artistic dresses. In the same way now, supposing uh, I tell you that you don't drink any alcohol, you will all run away, but I don't say that. After Sahaja Yoga, people just don't drink. Now your money is saved by that. But also what is saved in that is the amount of uh, paraphernalia as you need for a drinking party. <laughs> First time, in India I never used to serve any drinks by a house, but CP said in England, you have to do it. My husband said, you have to do it in that. I said, all right, that's your lookout, not mine. So he got hold of a dictionary, you see, a French dictionary to find out what all we have to buy to begin with. So you'll be amazed at that time, it was in 1970, Three we went to London, yeah. And uh, he said that at least we'll have to pay 900 pounds to get the best quality tumblers. I said, 900 pounds for what? He said, for everything you have to have a different type of a tumbler. I said, really, but for what? What is the need? He said, that's the custom, that's the norm. So you see, also the norms that we have created are so stupid, there is no need. Instead of that, in India, suppose you are well off, all right, they'll have six tumblers made of silver, which they'll pass on from father to son, son to his son, and that's all. You won't need many things, or plates now. So you'll have first course, then a second course, and a third course, and then you start moving with all your cutlery this way, then this way, then this way, and <laughs> really you don't know what to do with it. So there's no need to do all that, there's no need, you see, to do all that, which is the necessity, you see. But you could be simple, you could use your fingers is the best because after realization you have vibrations in your hand, divine vibration. So you start using your hand and you can use a one nice plate of brass or of silver in that same amount. You see, six plates of silver cost you the same as this elaborate, say, a dinner set, which is always, uh, I would say, um, has to be replaced because it breaks, this happens, that happens. And the same plates you can pass on to other people. There are so many things we waste our time. Now if you go to a lady's uh, apartment, you will be surprised that the whole place will be filled with this, Elizabeth Arden, this, that, that, that. You open something, it's all false of it. <laughs> and then you say, why have you got so many? No, Mother, this has gone out of fashion. Baba, whatever was good for your skin, whatever was once good for you, use that throughout. No, but they are changing every time. I said, but you decide what you want to use it and use that thing all through. What's the use of filling these cupboards with all this? You see, we were in London, we were searching out houses and, I mean, horrible, I tell you, the experiences were. You go into any house and suddenly you find two legs of the pants falling onto your and then you look up and there's a pile of things kept on top of the loft. Just the loft is overflowing with all the clothes and so much was filled. I tell you, Australians are much more neater people, but if you go to England, you'll be shocked because they are the buyers for ages. They have been buying, 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 and there's no place for human beings to live inside. They live outside. <laughs> in the Hyde Park. They're sitting in the Hyde Park. If you ask them, why are you here? Our house are over full. So you develop the balance and because of this lack of balance there is ecological problem. Is Kundalini to be developed within certain age of human existence or can it be developed at any age? 
is the Kundalini to be developed at a certain age in human existence, or can it be developed at any age? At any age, there's nothing like that. There's no age, no time, nothing. It's beyond all that. Even so many children are born realized these days. Sahaja yogis get the children, when they marry, they get children who are already born realized. They're so wise, you know, very wise. And uh, they come and have a conference with me, very special. And then we, they tell me about all the uncle and aunties, what's wrong with their chakras. <laughs> they are my great friends, I should say. It was very wise, you know. For me? No, no, anyone meditating. Sure. I didn't understand. What no, no. <laughs> she said uh, she was recently told that she shouldn't meditate until she's had a glass of water. Are you, Sir Jogis told you that? See, sometimes what happens, supposing you are a liver patient, then the heat might be generated out of your head, you see, like a chimney, it opens out. So if you take little water, the heat won't feel so much, maybe that. But I get the heat from all the rest of the people and I'm gone drinking water all the time to cool myself down. so many different forms of meditation. Does any sort of meditation work? No, no, it does not. We do not meditate. We have to be in meditation. There's difference between the two. You do not meditate before realization. After realization, you are in meditation. So you become thoughtlessly aware. So when you meditate in Sahaja Yoga, you become thoughtlessly aware and then you start growing into a new awareness or a higher awareness which you call as doubtless awareness. And that is how you start growing. So the meditation is that you get into meditation, you don't do meditation. This one. If you're one of these people that are thinking all the time and you're blocking up the other side, how do you balance it up? If you are an excessive thinker, if you're thinking all the time, and this causes a block on the opposite side, how do you balance things up? Just by, you see, turning your hand left to the right. It's very simple. You won't believe, but that's how we manage. First, the vibrations must flow from your hand then you will know how to balance. But when that doesn't happen, then you can ask somebody to balance you. Quite a big question. Uh, <laughs> it says you appear to be forming a, a, a hypothesis about Kundalini yeah. and relating it to medical conditions. From where does this hypothesis come? Hypothesis. About Kundalini. Is my own knowledge. I have also done medicine to relate it to that. is my own knowledge, I should say, and so many saints had this knowledge too. But only thing I have done 
is I've related to not only to medical but also to science. That's very important. Apart from that, I have devised a method, I would say, uh, a permutations and combinations of human problems. Uh, I've studied them and worked it out in such a way that our mass realization can be given. You see, I, I always try not to talk about myself because, see, Christ said that He was the Son of God, which was the truth, truth, absolute truth. But people crucified Him for that because people don't understand divine, divine things. They don't understand, you see, they have no idea as to the divine power, what it can do. So they don't understand. So no use telling them about yourself. As I told you that I want to live, I don't want to get crucified just now. You are meditating. Yes. Now, which meditation she is doing? First of all, let's know. What kind of meditation are you doing? Chanting. Meditation. Chanting. Chanting is absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. Because if you are not connected, supposing you are taking the name of God anyway, and you are not connected. Then what's the use of taking the name? You are not connected. It's like telephoning without connection. It's very practical. Moreover, say, if you have to meet, say, the Queen of England, you have to have a protocol. You have to know her. You have to go by proper channel. You cannot just go and say, Oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. They'll all arrest you there. And if you do chanting, then you get into troubles, terrible troubles. So you must have authority. God is, is not in your pocket that you go on chanting His name all the time, but what you have to do is to be in His kingdom. Then even once if you take His name, you are blessed. Chanting is the most maddening thing, I think. Stand before the light, I can't see you. Huh? Yeah. There is a number, it says there are a number of teachers who can make this connection for one with the divinity. Huh. I have not known any so far. I have not known any. They are all in the market and making money, that's all. I would like to know if there's somebody else. But once you get your realization, once you become a Sahajogi, then you can give realization to others. That's different. But I've not known anyone so far who is doing this. If you know anyone, please let me know. What you see God as, please? How do you see God? How do you describe God? Should I describe Him just now? <laughs> it is, uh, we should say that God is the one who is the divinity, we can call it divinity. And the divinity becomes active. It sleeps and then it becomes active. When it becomes active, then we say that God is now awakened. And when it is awakened, He separates Himself from His power. And His power is the 
primordial mother as we call her or the Holy Ghost. And He is watching the work of the Holy Ghost. She creates everything. She creates up to human beings and it is He who is watching it. He is the spectator. There are many things can be said because, you see, God cannot be described in such a short time. But once you get your Realization, you start understanding what is God Almighty and what is His power. But first you must have the light. As I told you yesterday, now there are so many lights in this hall. Now if I start telling you about the origin of this light and the electricity and how it came here and all that, it's a headache. But what you have to do is to just put on one switch, it comes up. When you have the light, in that light, if you see, the subtle knowledge will be easily understood. I am surprised that these people who have never heard the name of Kundalini and who had no idea of divinity also much, have become such experts in this knowledge in such a short time, while well, it's a very, very subtle knowledge. So gradually you will know everything. First you get your Realization. Now again. Really? <laughs> That's what? So yes, I really, I must tell you that they, they, I think these people understood there's a market because, you see, this is a special category of people you are. It's a special category, it's already described. That such a special category of people will seek God, they are called and men of God, but William Blake, will be on this earth and they will know God also they will make other men of God, is He's described. So many of them have prophesied like that. But when they came to know about that such a thing exists, they just started a market. somebody in India who speaks in a similar way about these things to yourself, is confused as to who are the genuine and who are the... Uh, you see, the genu genuineness is first you apply one thing, does he take money first? Ninety-nine percent they'll finish. Then you should say, does he give Realization to his disciples? You talk to the disciples, have they got their Realization? Have they got any knowledge? they know the modus operandi or not. If they do not know, just uh, they say, now you are realized. That's not. They have to know each and everything. What is their depth of knowledge? First, as you go in the market, you see, find out so if somebody has purchased something, is it good, is really good or not? In the same way, when you are seeking something, you must first really, with a free mind, go and see the disciples, what have they got? What have they achieved? How are they? What sort of a life they are leading? It's the best way if you want to really find out. It's the best way to do that. You should not just blindly go to something and you should not just succumb to something because somebody says so. Even I, whatever I have said it, I said that you first experience. If you have the experience, uh, then only you have to believe in yourself and you believe in such not before that. It's a blindness. But you, you can't have the experience unless you have the connection. What's he saying? Well, that's what we're here for tonight, to give you that connection. Of course, now I'm going to do it. That's what I'm saying, but a number of people say that they can make the connection. What's he saying? Can I answer that, Srimad? Yeah. Uh, that is exactly what we will give you this evening. Srimad Tati will give you that experience and then you can make the connection. Because Two are one. You are making the connection through that experience. Okay. It's not something that you have to believe, it's something you will feel. No, 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 no. No, 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 not at all. It's not a thing like that. You have to certify yourself. Now the experience is that you feel the cool breeze coming out of your continental bone area. Yourself. 
and also you feel the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost all around. This is to be certified by you only. But you should not also doubt yourself. Even so many feel then say, uh, this is due to this uh, air conditioning. Then they go home, close the windows, close the doors, make it hermetically sealed. Still they feel. Then they say, now what is this? So doubting up to a point is sensible. But if you go beyond that, then it's harmful to you, not to anyone. Because I don't need Sahaja Yoga, you need it. You need it. You want it. You have to ask for it. I cannot force on you. No, no, no way I can force on you. You have to say, I want my Self-realization. In your freedom you have to ask, otherwise I cannot force. It cannot be forced. Now one more question and then we will we'll start the three persons at it. Is, is the healing capacity of Sahaja Yoga mm -hmm. al aligned to Ayurvedic medicine? What medicine? Is the, is the ability of Sahaja Yoga to heal in any way connected with Ayurvedic medicine? Of course. There are two doctors who have got their MD in Delhi in Sahaja Yoga. They have shown how certain diseases are cured. They have taken three, four diseases each person. Now there's third one who's doing, and there are seven doctors in London who are doing experiments. I mean, they are just trying to document it. Those people have been cured. There are people like blood cancers, nephritis, myelitis, all kinds of people have been cured. So they are trying to document it. We have 200, no, how many, 400 doctors in Russia who are practicing surgery. It's all related to it. Because this is a new science, we can call it, this is metamodernism. When people are seeing something higher, it is working out. But that doesn't mean that we'll take away all the practice of doctors. They should not be afraid of it. Because, you see, we can only help people who get realization not the people who do not get realization. Those people who do not get realization, we cannot help them. So it is a byproduct of your realization. Reincarnation, Trinitaji, what are your thoughts? Huh? Sorry. Reincarnation, what are your thoughts on reincarnation? You do reincarnate, no doubt, you do. But you should not believe whatever I say, why should you believe that? Because I am saying that, you should find out yourself. You can find out in Sahaja Yoga whatever I say is true or not. Whatever I say is for you to judge later on. It's all absolutely open. The biggest thing that Sahaja Yoga has achieved, I feel, more than medical, is that they are absolutely free of addictions. People who came to me were so addicted to such horrible type of drugs that when they came they couldn't see me. They were like coma patients and overnight they gave it up. This is the biggest achievement today, I think. And I feel very gratified for that, because you must have heard how even small children below 12 years of age in England, in one part of England, in the southern part, are taking drugs, which is such a dangerous thing. Because you become absolutely free and capable of asserting your freedom.
Should we now have our self-realization, all of us? Before we start, I have to request you to take out your shoes because this Mother Earth helps us a lot. <coughs> Not working? All right. Connections, you see, that's the point. Now there are two conditions which we have to accept. First one is that at this moment you forget the past. Absolutely you should know that you have no business to condemn yourself. That you are not guilty at all of anything. If you feel guilty, then it's another myth. And at this time, you have to know this all-pervading power is the ocean of forgiveness and you cannot commit any mistakes which cannot be completely dissolved by this power. So have confidence in yourself, please. These are very important conditions. Yesterday I met all of you, but today I may not be able to meet you all. At least those whom I met yesterday must have noticed that I had to really correct them on these two points. So please help me, cooperate. Then secondly, the second uh, condition is very simple, which you understand, that you have to forgive everyone in general. Because logically, whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything, logically, think about it. You don't do anything, whether we forgive or we don't forgive. But if we don't forgive, then we play into wrong hands. The people who have tortured us or troubled us or hurt us are quite happy. But we are the ones by not forgiving are suffering. Now some people say it's very difficult, but it is a, just a myth, it's just a bubble in your head. So just forgive all of them once for all. I told yesterday, those people who are not forgiving, they got their realization. Tell all the flowers, all the trees and everyone loudly, I have forgiven everyone. Don't think about them also individually, just say all of them are forgiven in general. It's such a relief, immediately you feel the relief on your head. It's very important to forgive. And that you must have full confidence that you are all human beings and you all are capable of getting Self-realization. And I will get my Realization, that should be your full Self-confidence, that is going to help us. Now as I have told you that there's left and right two energies, the left is the energy of mundane desires, everyday desires, not the pure desire, and the right is the energy of action. So you please put both your feet little apart from each other, who are sitting on the chairs, who are sitting on the ground are perfectly all right, they don't have to worry. Now please put your left hand towards me. This is symbolic, that you really want your Self-realization. Those who do not want to have, I cannot force it on them, and they should, in all civility, leave the hall, because they can disturb others' ascent. 
So to be civil to others, they should leave the hall. But those who want to have their self-realization have to do this much, is to do what I'm telling you and hardly ten minutes will take to have your Self-Realization. So just left hand towards Me, the right hand is to be used for nourishing your different centers. So you put first your right hand on your heart. This is the center of the Spirit. The Spirit resides in your heart. But His seat is here, but He resides in your heart. It resides in your heart. Then you take down your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen. This is the center of your mastery, which is being created by great masters and prophets. Then you take down your right hand in the lower portion of your abdomen. This is the center of pure knowledge, absolute knowledge. Knowledge about the divine powers, its laws, which work through your being. You don't have to know mentally, but they are manifested through your being, pure knowledge. As you can see Me, as you can feel something, in the same way this pure knowledge works through you. Now raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen. Then again on your heart. Then in the corner of your neck and your shoulder, as I told you that when you feel guilty, this center goes out of order and turn your head to your right completely. Here is the center where you have to forgive yourself completely and to know that you are not guilty at all. Now take your right hand on your forehead across, like this, and gently put down your head as far as possible, resting on your hand. This is the center where you have to forgive everyone in general. Now you have to take your right hand on the back side of your head, back side of your head, and push back your head as far as possible. Push it back as far as possible. This is the center where without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, you have to ask forgiveness from the Divine Power. Now, stretch your palm. I'm just telling you how to do it, then later on we'll do it in a proper way. Now, stretch your palm fully and put the center of your palm exactly on the fontanel bone area, which was the soft bone in your childhood. Now please put down your head as far as possible. Please put it down. And now, start moving your scalp. Push back your fingers, otherwise there's no proper pressure. Please push back your fingers nicely. Now move your scalp with that pressure, not the hand so much as the scalp, seven times clockwise. Put down your head, please. Push back your fingers and move your scalp slowly seven times. Very slowly. with the proper pressure. <laughs> Done. That's all we have to do. Now, I would request you to take out your spectacles because you have to close your eyes until I tell you, please don't open your eyes. Move your legs apart from each other and <coughs> please 
put your left hand towards me and right hand on your heart and now if there is anything that is tight on your neck or on your waist please reduce the pressure be comfortable sit straight not too much bending or bending back but in a comfortable way in a very comfortable way now you have to be pleasantly placed towards yourself now please put your right hand on your heart here you have to ask me a very fundamental question about yourself because i told you you have to become a divine computer so first you use me for that now ask a question in your heart you can call me shri mata ji or mother whatever you like ask a question three times mother am i the spirit ask sincerely mother am i the spirit ask three times Now if you are the spirit you are your master because in that light you know what is right what is wrong and you become your own guide so now put your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side we are only working on the left hand side press it hard and here you ask another question three times mother am i my own master ask this question three times mother am i my own master i have already told you that i respect your freedom i cannot force pure knowledge upon you So now please put your right hand in the low portion of your abdomen here you have to ask three times six times because this petal this this center has got six petals please ask six times mother please give me pure knowledge please say that six times mother please give me pure knowledge say it in humility you are asking for the highest six times please when you ask for pure knowledge your kundalini starts rising so we have to clear our upper centers with our self confidence <laughs> so raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and here you press it hard and say with full confidence 10 times 10 times mother i am my own master mother i am my own master please say 10 times as i told you that you are not this body this mind the ego these conditionings but you are the pure spirit 
So now please raise your right hand on your heart. Here now say with full confidence twelve times, Mother, I am the pure spirit. Please say it twelve times, Mother, I am the pure spirit. Please put your hand in your heart. This divine power is the ocean of knowledge, is the ocean of love, compassion and bliss. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness and you cannot commit any mistakes which can not be dissolved by this great power of forgiveness. So please forgive yourself and put your hand in the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your head to your right. Here, please help me by saying with full confidence, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Just say that with full confidence, please. You have to say that, please, sixteen times. I have already told you that if you forgive or don't forgive, you do not do anything. It's a myth, absolute myth. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands and torture yourself. So give up this myth, once for all, just give up this myth. Now raise your right hand onto your forehead across. Now put down your head as far as possible. Now here you have to say, not how many times, but with your heart in it. Say it, Mother, I forgive everyone in general. Just say that from your heart. Now take back your right hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as far as possible. Here, without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, just for your satisfaction, you have to say from your heart, not how many times, O oh, Divine Power, if I have done any mistakes, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Say it from your heart, O oh, Divine Power, if I have done anything against you or any mistakes, please forgive me. <coughs> That's all you have to say from your heart. Stretch back your head fully. Now, stretch your hand fully. And put the center of your palm on top of your fontanel bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now, bend your head 
as far as possible. Now, push back your fingers to have a good pressure on your scalp. Here again, I cannot force self-realization on you, I cannot force. So, you have to ask for it. Now, move your scalp slowly seven times, saying seven times, Mother, please give me self-realization. Saying seven times, Mother, please give me self-realization. Please open your eyes slowly, put down your hands. Now please put both your hands towards me like this. Put your right hand towards me, like this. And now put down your head and see if you are getting yourself a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area. Just see for yourself. Now, don't put the hand on top of your head, but away from it. And sometimes you might get it much further. You can also move your hand to see if there's a cool breeze coming out of your head. Now, don't doubt about the air conditioner because it's coming out of your head. Now, put your left hand towards me and put down your head. And now see with your right hand, right hand, if you are getting a cool or a hot breeze out of your fontanel bone area. Now, Again, put your right hand to me, right hand like this. Put down your hand. See for last time, see clearly if there's a cool or a hot breeze, maybe slight, might be more coming. Don't get confused. See for yourself, your attention is coming out. Now put both the hands towards me like this. and. Watch me without thinking. You will see that there's no thought in your mind. Now raise both your hands towards the sky like this and ask another fundamental question. Mother, is this the... Mother, is this the breeze the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. Mother, is this the all-pervading power of Divine Love? Mother, is this the Parama Chaitanya? Ask any one of these questions three times, put back your head completely, push back your head completely <laughs> and ask this question, any one of them, three times. Now take down your hands, such blowing of vibration. All those who have felt cool breeze on your fingertips, in your hands or on top of your fontanel bone area, 
Please raise both your hands. Please raise both your hands. May God bless you all. May God bless you. Now you should know it has not happened through any mental activity. So you cannot argue it out, you cannot discuss it, but you have to just feel it and grow into it. Another thing I would suggest that it's not an individual procedure, it's a collective procedure, it's a collective thing. Like one nail which falls out of your body, it's not looked after in the same way if you say that I'm doing it at home, mother, it's all right, that's not the thing. You have to come to our collective. And we have a very nice collective uh, arrangements here where you can come and you can tell your problems and you can master this art, absolutely master. I hope next year I'll come to Melbourne and then find lots of people who have achieved this mastery. I bless you all from my heart. Those who have not felt cool breeze can come on this side. So I may not be able to meet all of you, though I wanted very much to meet all of you today again, but we'll have some music for you to enjoy. Please. Can we have local here, please, to help? Just a... Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Mika, we have a special announcement to make, so please, please. She wants what? I didn't fall. Water, all right, please come. Give us some. Is there any other glass? We have a follow-up program. Some other glass. Yes, but some other glass. At the Q Library building in Coffin Road. It's been difficult for me. It's all right for a child. Starting at 10 30 and running until about 1 o'clock. If you'd like to come along, please feel free. We will do our best to help you to establish the realization the treatment idea is showing you all tonight. We also have a center in Blackburn. In, at 107 Lake Road, Blackburn. Sir, how are you? I have a number of people who are in the room. In Dillon. They are here. Oh. I want them to be Because that? with one with chair, I ah. think behind. So we she's all right. Yes. Ah, yeah. she's the <laughs> young, young one there. Yeah, I really? Their, what trouble yes. they had? That one was paralyzed. Now she can move left hand and right. Amjad? Amjad? Dr. Amzad Ali, please come along. Are you here? We will just talk to them. And he has to take their... Uh, they must be having their medical reports. No, they are because they leave that one. She lives in nursing house. There is no doctor. Oh. They look after them, but we do program. I said to you, so, so we do they, nursing. Yes. Here they haven't, but everybody can see. Yeah. She, she is still in chair. She can move left and right. Right so hand. I think I'll ask Kamzat to uh, file it because we have to send certain uh, uh, documents of people being cured here. Yes, so but I take from... Yes, but doc doctor I'll tell Dr. Ramzat to help you. But uh, I go to bring her mother. Uh, I go to bring her here. No, yes, sir. Okay. Bring them here, I'll kill.